What you've been told are lies. There's been a coup on planet Earth, and it is our job to reveal it. There's only one team whistleblowers can trust with the truth. Bill Ryan, Terry Cassidy, Shadow Operations, The Mars Project. Ah, uh, look at that. Right. Now, focus on the ridge. Yes. And sweep across slowly to the right. We were in a remote part of the Utah desert. My partner, Kerry Cassidy, and me, Bill Ryan. Every step in our investigation had led us here, out in the middle of nowhere. If our sources were correct, we were closing in on a military installation, a hidden base for a top secret government space program, one that's been sending people to Mars. Let's go closer. But we'll get closer to that on the road. We knew we had to proceed cautiously. We did not want to be seen. But it was too late. Suddenly, they blocked the road. Security guards with guns. This wasn't good. Not good at all. Hey, leave the camera alone. Hey, leave the camera The camera off. A secret Mars space program. A military base on the Red Planet. A mysterious syndicate concealing extraterrestrial contact. Kerry Cassidy and I had been hearing rumors about a Mars cover-up for years. We've tried to find its purpose and who was behind it. But in all our years as investigators, we've never found anything close to a smoking gun. Not until we got a call from a man named Gordon Novell. What did he say? He said he'd been given some photographs. He wanted to show them to us. Did you say what all? No. But he doesn't want to meet at his house. He wants to meet at an empty lot. So, obviously, he wants to avoid surveillance. Gordon Novell would know to take precautions. He's worked in government intelligence for decades. Here he is. Hey. Gordon Novell is said to be part of a secret group known as the Aviary. Insiders with high security clearance who share information on UFOs and ET contact. He wants this information out there, and he knows a lot of powerful forces want to keep it hidden. I got something I want to show you. This is convincing evidence that there has been life on Mars. Wait a minute, Jack. These are NASA photos, the best stuff that I've seen to date. We'd both seen intriguing photos of the surface of Mars before, but nothing like this. These photos had much better resolution than anything NASA had released publicly. The images clearly showed things on the surface, things we could not explain. These are pretty authentic looking. So where'd you get these? They came from my friends at Langley. Langley, Virginia, headquarters of the CIA. What do you know about this thing, Gordon? It could be air transfer tubes. Is it being used to move water or is people walking through it? What is it? What's it doing there? It's certainly not natural. That's metal. And it's on Mars, and this has been a real eye-opener for me. And they're developing Mars. Somebody is. Doesn't say it's an Americans. Doesn't say it's ET. But I would say from the technology I'm looking at here, it don't look like it was made in the USA. Air transfer tubes, tunnels, structures that were not natural. Novell seemed convinced that someone had established some sort of base on Mars. But how were they getting there? Novell's next photo was a clue. Now, what is that? It's awfully high. It's taken from the throttle. It's, it's higher than the plane should be flying. It's obviously some type of sophisticated flying triangle. We'd heard talk of a mysterious fleet of triangular craft, but Novell told us they were real, and that they could be connected to a secret Mars program that's been going on for decades. I heard that they reverse engineered it in the 60s. You're saying reverse engineered from an ET craft, Absolutely. Right? What's the range and capability of these starships? Do you have any idea? 
they can do anything they want. You know, if you got ET technology, it would be pretty quick and pretty fast. If there is a secret Mars program, who's behind it? The US, China, North Korea, the Russians, or someone else? Does our government have access to ET technology? If so, why are they keeping it so secret? The whole reason for the cover-up is economics. It's money. If you don't have to pay for fuel, then the world changes dramatically. The banks live off of oil and gas. So that is protecting their own interests? It's protecting the banks, and banks run the world. If Gordon Novell was correct, it could have huge implications for the future of the human race. This hidden technology could end world poverty. It could also put the energy corporations out of business. So it's all about energy, and energy determines finance, and that determines and the finance secrecy. finance determines the politics which determines the secrecy. We couldn't simply take his word for it. We needed to find out exactly what was happening on Mars. The first clue lay in the NASA photographs he'd given us. Those photographs of the tubes, I mean, <laughs> they look unnatural to me. But I want to go cautiously with this. I want to get a second opinion on the tubes. I want to get somebody who knows a little bit about geology more than you and me. Right, so get a geologist to look at the photographs. Yeah. But are we going to tell him that they're on Mars? Are we just going to lay the photograph out and say, can you tell us what you think this is? Yeah, we shouldn't front out him. You're quite right. And Geology is geology. The rules apply whatever planet you're on. So if the things aren't natural, they must be artificial. There's no other choice. There was no time to waste. We arranged a meeting the next day with an independent scientific expert. Ron Nix is an engineering geologist. He's been analyzing desert formations for more than 30 years. This needs an explanation. What have we got here? We showed him the photos. We didn't tell him they were from Mars. What are we looking at here? You could be looking at the desert, but in my experience, I haven't seen anything that looks quite like that. Take a look at these crescent-shaped features. Do they not have a higher reflectance in the surrounding stuff? As if they're made out of material that's not the same as yeah. this? This feature here, the bright spot, mm -hmm. clearly has a much higher reflectance than anything else in that image. And you can really see it. Maybe it's an engineer structure. When I try to explain it with the principles that I'm used to, it does not look natural yeah. to me. Mars or not, Ron Nix would know a natural formation when he saw it. He said this wasn't natural. Well, let me ask you the question, where did you get these prints? We were given these prints okay. by somebody who has significant insider connections. We were told that it's on Mars from NASA originals. I mean, we're not trying to put you on this. No, it's okay. I mean, it's fascinating, but doesn't look natural to me. Okay. Thank you. So if the structures might not be natural, that meant they had to be engineered. But by whom? To answer that, we needed to talk to NASA watchdog and critic, Richard C. Hoagland. Hoagland said he'd meet with us, but we had to meet on his turf, the one place on Earth that most closely resembled Mars. So Richard, what would explain these structures on Mars? Well, not only could there be extraordinary ancient ruins, but we could be launching human missions to Mars. Coming up, a thriving civilization on the red planet? Bombshell revelations from a Mars expert. What you see here, I believe, is a buried transportation system. Then, a NASA astronaut reveals shocking information about a secret Mars program. I was specifically appointed to go to Mars, but history got rewritten. He just lost the connection. And later, 
An eyewitness confirms the extraordinary capabilities of the triangular spacecraft. This craft can reach Mars in 33 hours. Kerry Cassidy and I have worked for years to disclose information the government is hiding about extraterrestrial contact. Now, we've gotten our hands on NASA photos showing possible evidence of engineered structures on Mars. To unravel the significance of these photos, we've come to the Arizona desert to meet with space science expert Richard Hoagland. This is probably the closest analog to Mars you're going to find anywhere on Earth. This thing was formed, we think, about 50,000 years ago by an object coming in through this incredible Arizona sky, buried itself in the ground a thousand feet down. Hoagland is a former NASA consultant who claims NASA is covering up what it knows about life on Mars. He's uncovered what he believes to be photographic evidence of ancient ruins on Mars. Anomalous structures, including a photo that appears to show a giant face on the surface of the planet. I've been looking at photographs taken by NASA, by the Soviets, for almost 30 years. If anyone could tell us what we're looking at, it would be him. So Richard, what would explain these structures on Mars? If you actually look at this, it looks like it's ruins being eroded out of these sand dunes. What you see here, I believe, is a buried transportation system. Okay, you know this because right. you're in touch with people from inside NASA? Of course. There are people leaking like crazy. There were people that were leaking in the beginning of the Apollo program. And we found little clues buried in that database, which now confirm what we have discovered. You cannot ignore the actual science. I mean, look here. This is a Mariner 9 picture. Hoagland had brought some intriguing NASA photos of his own. This is the infamous face on Mars that was photographed by Viking in 1976. But what the officials say is that it's all tricks of light and shadow. Nothing there. But it's not a trick of light and shadow. And we know that now because we have data after data after data with multiple angles, multiple lighting. It's not a trick. There's no doubt in my mind it's a statue. But because most people are authority driven, they take the voice of their experts over their own eyes. So your so, watchword is take a look for yourself. That's absolutely. what you want to tell Take so a look for yourself. What else do you have there? These are yes. the pyramids located just to the west. On this face on Mars. You can see there's this incredible precise geometry. There's no doubt this was a huge, mile-wide, five-sided pyramid. These guys, who I think were our ancestors, built big. Hoagland had an even more shocking story to tell. He said that back when he was a network television science consultant, he was inside a NASA control room when the first Mars space probe touched down. When Viking landed in 1976, I'm standing there looking at a monitor with Carl Sagan. Carl was on my left, some NBC guys are on my right, and we're looking at this first color image come in, downlink, live from Mars, and it looks like Arizona. I saw some of the pictures and sets a clear resolution. Oh, well, Mr. President, I know all we're seeing is the landscape. Uh, with the uh, maybe blue sky in the distance. Then, a few hours later, the head guys sent technicians around to tweak the red knobs on all the monitors in the entire lab. Certain individuals have the political power to keep all of us in the dark about our heritage. They started in 1976 by changing the color of Mars so it would never really look like what it is, which is apparently a lot like Arizona. An error was made. The Martian sky, the scientists now say, is pinkish. This is the first color picture of the Viking 2 landing site, proving that this area of Mars is red, just as the Viking 1 site was. So this corresponds to the real Mars. Look at the sky. It's not pink. It's baby blue. So NASA had gone to great lengths to hide the fact that Mars' atmosphere is similar to our own, able to support life. If someone's painting the sky... They all had to be in on it. And that would point to an even bigger Mars cover-up. Is it possible they've already been there but they haven't told us? That's part of what we call the secret space program. What's your personal view about that? A, it exists. 
B, they know a hell of a lot more than we know through NASA. And C, there's cover-up after cover-up after cover-up, not only in the NASA area, but in every area. Hoagland had shown us evidence of life on Mars and of NASA's attempts to suppress it. He's been tracking this for about 37 years. He has watched the cover-up step by step with his own eyes. That's what's amazing. He was there in the control center when the original images, but he was there and he saw the color of the sky and then they changed them a couple of hours That's later. That's amazing. But did this cover-up extend to secretly sending men to Mars? We needed another look at some recent history. What we did have back in the 60s were uh, a manned mission to Mars being planned and then scrapped, right? Yep. We began where the public record leaves off, a 1967 NASA program to send men to Mars. Astronaut Brian O'Leary was selected to be on the first flight, but when the program was abruptly cancelled the following year, he hung up his spacesuit and quit. We found O'Leary had moved to South America. He seemed nervous about talking, but we managed to persuade him to speak with us via Skype. Hi, Brian. We wanted to find out if Mars was the reason he'd left his country behind. It was in 67, was it, that you joined up with NASA for the, their Mars mission program? Yes, I was specifically appointed to go to Mars, and uh, the mission was to have taken place in the 1980s. But uh, history got rewritten in 1968. The Johnson Space Center I announced that these Mars missions would be canceled. But your interest in Mars has continued. Oh, absolutely. The fact is there may have been a civilization there once that was, uh, well, basically uh, was, was wiped out. NASA was covering up quite a bit. And in the past, Mars was certainly more Earth-like. There was liquid water there. We see the erosional features, dried up riverbeds, lakes. We may be looking at our own future by looking at Mars. Is there a reason why you're in Ecuador that might be linked to the mm -hmm. cover-up? Yes, uh, there, there are a number of reasons. Uh, I have had a history of uh, being threatened, and many of the people who uh, uh, did try to do me in are still around. Prudence uh, suggests that, I, that we just move here. Do you think that the secrecy extends to an alternative space program that we have been to Mars, but we're not being told about it? Well, reports suggest the answer to that might be yes. There are all kinds of secrets that are being held from us, such as I... Brian? We just lost the connection. Coming up, Bill and Carrie learn about a secret program to acquire alien technology. Apparently they had an original seat from a UFO. Then, jump rooms to Mars. The Mars Traveler shows where he took off. The United States government has had operational teleportation capability since 1967. And later, the team seeks answers in the remote desert and ends up in a dangerous situation. Get the cameras out of here now. Former astronaut Brian O'Leary may have been about to confirm that the Mars program had continued in secret as a black shadow operation. There are all kinds of secrets that are being held from us, such as... I... Brian? We just lost the connection. And then, suddenly, the transmission went dead. Were we getting too close to the truth? The Mars witnesses are really in fear for their lives, like Brian O'Leary. We're talking about something so hot. My provisional conclusion is that there's something very significant about Mars that they don't want us to know about. If they really have been on Mars since 1980s or even earlier, then what an incredible story to share with the whole human race. Why keep it secret? We decided to reach out to David Wilcock, a writer and researcher into UFOs and ancient civilizations who has inside information about the possibility of a secret Mars program. 
Among his contacts are insiders directly involved with the so-called Montauk project, the secret program researching the very nature of space-time. Phase one began, I guess, in the early 1960s. Apparently what had happened was that they had an original seat from a UFO. The UFO had crashed, and they had taken the seat out, and then they had figured out how to set it up to a power supply. All the energy that's in the chair that's focused by the operator's mind is then sent into this antenna. And there's this sort of shimmering area. And then you actually go to wherever the person in the chair thinks about. So if he thinks about somewhere, then there will be a portal that opens up that actually goes there. It sounded like Wilcock was talking about space travel through teleportation. I asked him where he'd gotten this information. An insider witness I've spoken to I called Daniel. And he was telling you this was all real? Absolutely. He was an Air Force captain. He had a background in physics and engineering. But was he saying that they used the chair to travel to Mars? Is this what he said? Yeah. Daniel said that there was a mission to Mars and that they actually found ancient bases and that they're very extensive underground. Extensive ancient bases? Uh-huh. Yeah, we're talking hundreds of thousands of years old. You're looking at this dry, dead red planet that at one time apparently was a civilization just like ours. Yeah, what happened to the ocean? Where did the oceans, Where did the go? oceans go? Well, that gets into Richard saying that the sky is not orangish, it's, it's blue on Mars. Uh, so Mars, there was the atmosphere, right? Yeah, Mars was like the Earth. Can we talk to Daniel? He's very fearful. Daniel's in hiding. He doesn't even want to be in the public eye because he signed a contract yes. that authorized lethal force in the event that he ever told any of this stuff to anyone. Could be his death sentence. If we can't talk to Daniel, who do we talk to? Andy Bizzaggio claimed to have been to Mars and Bizzaggio might be the real deal. David's story was incredible. Could a secret government space program really be teleporting people to Mars? We needed to speak to someone who had first-hand knowledge of this. So Andy, where are we going now? Can you direct us? We're going down south on Sepulveda here to Imperial. Andrew Bishago is a Cambridge University educated researcher and lawyer. He claims he was part of a program called Project Pegasus, a program that conducted experiments in teleportation. It was being carried out as a black project of the CIA. The Shago led us to a building near the Los Angeles airport where he said the experiments took place. It's this building right here. There's been a major facelift to the building. I must say, this is not what I was expecting. So the big picture here... The United States government has had operational teleportation capability in which somebody can literally jump through a tunnel in the time-space continuum uninjured. Well, since 1967-68. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but how do you know this? I took two trips to Mars. Coming up, is teleportation actually possible? Teleportation does not violate the laws of physics. Then... The investigators find the shocking evidence that blows the Mars cover-up wide open. I don't think I'd ever forget that day. And later, a dangerous face-off with Black Ops security. I must say, this is not what I was expecting. Harry and I were face to face with a man who claimed to have been sent to Mars, but he didn't get there the way we'd expected. I was 19, I was uh, at UCLA. They put a CIA officer sort of in my life as a contact officer. I was asked if I wanted to go to Mars. I said, no, I don't want to go to Mars. And I finally said to him, why is it essential that I go? And he said, because the survival of the human race depends on it. What is it CIA got to do with interplanetary travel. I mean, why is the CIA involved with this at all? It was initiated under the United States Navy, ultimately organized around the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. But the thrust of it was gathering intelligence for the Central Intelligence Agency. We were actually hiding 
teleportation from Soviet spies among our own defense labs during these years. Do you know if the Russians have this technology? I know that they were working on it. I know that we were several years ahead of them. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe we weren't the only people teleporting to Mars. I asked him what was actually involved in getting there. We would jump from an uh, office building, a CIA facility in El Segundo, California, to an underground location on Mars. We went up to the eighth floor. Lights began flashing. The box that kind of morphed and crunched into a cylinder. I could see this swirling pattern. The door opened in an underground base on Mars. looked like perhaps an underground cavern that the Martians had been using that we had sort of built an infrastructure inside of. I encountered three humans from Earth during the first trip and then in the second trip we walked out on the surface and walked for about a half a mile and encountered one of the uh, personnel from the CIA. But you're saying you walked out on the surface so the surface air is breathable. Well on the first trip I walked out wearing my respiration equipment but when I took my helmet off, it was somewhat difficult to breathe, but I certainly didn't begin hyperventilating. I was able to breathe normally on the surface. Was the sky blue? Yes. The sky on Mars is a pale baby blue. And the terrain isn't all rust red. I mean, it's predominantly rust red. I think the area on Earth that comes closest to what Mars looks like would probably be Sedona, Arizona. The Shago's description of Mars seemed credible, but his method of getting there, that was harder to wrap our minds around. If, say, you're teleporting from here to Mars, you've got a dynamic system that's moving around the solar system. Why do you pop out of Mars and nowhere else? I'm a lawyer and a writer, not a technologist. The science of that, I can't answer that. But clearly some form of hyperdimensional physics was involved because of the fact that it did do that. Since Andy couldn't explain the physics to us, we decided to speak to someone who could. is a theoretical physicist, author, and university lecturer. He specializes in the Big Bang, dark energy, and extra dimensions. We reached out to him for some answers. Well, we're investigative journalists, and we're investigating hyperdimensional physics. Okay. Now, one of the things that happens is that we have people coming to us, sort of a little bit off record, some people would call them whistleblowers, and we have heard from multiple witnesses that macro-scale teleportation is an established technology. And is this plausible? Mm -hmm. It may be plausible that someday we can do something resembling what you would call teleportation. Is there investigation into teleportation at this time? Sure, there are people are, are discussing something that we call teleportation. That's sort of the atom by atom level, yes. But your point is that that's not transferable to the macro level. Is, is, is well, this certainly basically? as a practical matter it's not, but even, you know, even as a matter Sean Carroll said one really, form of teleportation on the micro level was taking place now. But that couldn't explain teleportation on the macro level, like sending a human being to Mars. So he's saying that Scotty can't beam us up just yet, right? Maybe someday. You know, physicists always stress the difference between things that we don't know how to do and things that violate the laws of physics as we yes. understand them. And teleportation does not violate the laws of physics. It's what physicists call an engineering problem. If only we could learn how to do it. Sean Carroll had confirmed that teleportation was theoretically possible. I had one last question to ask him, one that might explain how it could be happening now. What if there was an extra dimension beyond the usual four of space and time. Imagine that this concrete pathway here, this is four-dimensional space-time which we will live in every day. If there was a fifth-dimensional wraparound, some people call it hyperspace, some people call it subspace, what mathematically would prevent stepping into that space, moving in that space, which doesn't take time because time's over here, and then reappearing in a different location in the world line, what we know is that mathematically we can easily create scenarios just like that. But to do anything like move a macroscopic person into an extra dimension would require far more energy and far more technological capability than we have now or will have for the next couple centuries at least. It would take us several centuries to develop this technology on our own. But what if we had help? What if we had a prototype to work from? One that had come from another planet. Coming up, 
Bill and Carrie are on the verge of a major discovery. There's several vehicles right here all of a sudden. Oh, my God. But will they make it past the Black Ops forces? They're watching what we're doing. These guys are tracking us every inch of the way. Carrie and I have been investigating unexplained activities on Mars. We decided to talk to the highest level source we could find, Bob Dean. Only he could help us put the pieces of this puzzle together. We really need your input. Robert Dean is the ultimate government black ops insider, a former Army Command Sergeant Major. He obtained NATO's highest security level, Cosmic Top Secret, when he worked on a deep cover investigation into the potential threat of UFOs. We told him we'd been investigating evidence of strange activities on Mars. We are getting a lot of information that there is a secret space program. There are shipments going to Mars, that there is a constant flow of even humans going to Mars, that there are underground bases when they have been there for quite some time. I mean, what is it you know about Mars and can you confirm or deny the things that I'm telling you right now? There has been an extraterrestrial presence on Mars for 100,000 years, for God's sake. Why do you want to tell us this? It's got to be brought out. The mass of people out there need to know what this is all about. There is a major ongoing facility on Mars right now. What can you tell us about that? There's a space facility which Mariner 9 photographed on the equator years and years ago, which NASA released accidentally, but then they denied they ever took the picture. I think it's a spaceport. I think probably it's where the that gigantic triangular objects were photographed. Gigantic triangular craft. Exactly what Gordon Novell had shown us. We were told it's a craft that is possibly flying to Mars from a base in Utah. Yes, underground base. Interesting. We go to Mars regularly, we go to the moon regularly. How is that possible? We're dealing with major extraterrestrial intelligence. We have science that we use every day that's over a hundred years beyond what establishment science has any idea about. Bob Dean was saying these spacecraft were using alien technology. Could that also explain teleportation? Because we have been talking to Andy Bishago. Do you know who he is? He was being teleported to Mars. Yes. Why keep it secret? The technology. There is no word to describe the value of the technology. We have had anti-gravity and we have had zero point energy for over 40 years infinite energy forever for nothing but it's not to be shared it's not to be even admitted but the average guy out there who's paying for his air conditioning and buying gas for his old clunker does not have any idea bob dean was talking about the ultimate secret war a race to control extraterrestrial technology a resource so valuable that many of the world's most powerful forces are battling to control it. Have you ever really looked at the evidence? No. There's a shadow government. It has its own army, its own air force, its own navy, that is totally separate and beyond everything that goes on in Washington. They're sitting on the technology. You understand? Yeah. That's why I'm, I think, You're playing with dynamite here. Bob Dean's warning was ringing in our ears as Kerry and I set out to find the top secret military installation in Utah. The one that could be hiding a launch pad to Mars. We'd arranged to meet Dave Rosenfeld a few miles from the edge of the base. Dave? He's a UFO investigator and an actual eyewitness to some extraordinary events in this area. This whole area is what they call the Utah Testing Training Range. Have you ever climbed the fence and gone over there at all? Absolutely not. What would happen? You, any idea? We'd probably have Apache helicopters on us within five, ten minutes. What is really going on here? One night we were out here and we heard this, this crackling noise. 
and we could smell ozone in the air, like something burning. And then we see just beyond this ridge line here, this beam would shoot up. I mean, it was huge through the clouds, up into space. I mean, it was just massive. Did you take pictures at any point of this beam? Yes. Wait here, I'll grab one for you. Dave Rosenfeld's story was extraordinary. So was his evidence. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Through the clouds. I mean, it was just massive. Rosenfeld's photos showed strange objects over the base, including a beam of light that cut deep into space. That night, did you get in trouble for being out here? Yes. I got confronted. These white SUVs block us in and they get out. They're palming their pistols as they're walking up. Very, very intimidating. He says, well, I suggest you guys turn around and get out of here because the people who follow us aren't as nice. They were trying to scare me to never come out here. Or I don't think I'd ever forget that day. Are you seeing any craft that are triangles, black triangles? Yes. At night, I have seen triangular craft flying back and forth. One of the contractors I met works on a craft called the Venture Star. What is the Venture Star? The Venture Star is a craft that can take people up into space. He says that this craft can reach Mars in 33 hours. Then we showed him the photo that started us on this quest. Have you seen that before? That looks like the Venture Star to me. Dave, do you think that craft could be based here? Yes, I think that the southern runway is one runway that could handle this type of craft. Can you take us out to this place that you've been talking about? Um, I try to stay away from that area. I can show you on a map where it's at, but... You're really, like, afraid that of what will happen if you... I've had too many, yeah, close calls with them. And Dave warned us that we would, too. As soon as you jump out of your truck and start filming, five minutes you're going to get confronted. But we wanted answers. There was no turning back. Right here. Everything in our investigation had led to this. All the clues pointed to the existence of a shadow space program, one that was using extraterrestrial technology to send humans to Mars. We set out the next morning to find the runway Dave told us about. We hoped to get photographic evidence of the Venture Star. We were miles from the base when we noticed something in the desert. Something that made us realize we were not alone. Ah, uh, look at that. Focus on the ridge. Yeah. And sweep across slowly to the right. That's that dust thing right there. That's a car riding on the dust, right? Correct. That's how you tell when a Humvee is coming towards you at 60 miles an hour across the desert. Look, there's several vehicles right here all of a sudden. Exactly. Look, did exactly. they just turn around? Oh, my God. We're already on their radar. They're watching what we're doing. These guys are tracking us every inch of the way. They do that. What are we going to do now? Well, there's only one way out of here. Time was running out, but we had to press on. We were so close now that we didn't want to give up. And then, there it was. See what I see? Um... Well, I think there's a runway coming out through those ridges right there. It's cleared ground, and it's straight as an arrow. There was no mistake. It looked like a runway. This could be the landing strip for the Venture Star. Let's go down further. We told the camera crew to be prepared for the worst. Guys, what my suggestion would be is if you had stopped, don't give them the real cards, don't give them anything that we're actually going to need. Give them the stuff from the test shoot that we did the other day. We don't need it. Despite the risks, we needed to get to that ridge. We were closer than ever to getting evidence of the secret Mars program. Okay, so there's the ridge. Wow. We're very, very close. Let's not go all the way over it. Let's stay hidden. I'm not sure how much further I can go here. Uh-uh. Jeez. Look what we got here. <laughs> End of the road. Suddenly, we had company. Military security. Yeah, they look pretty serious. Now I'm actually concerned. You should be. You should be. Let's talk to them. Cam, back in the car. Get those cameras out of here. Get those hey, out of here. Camera low. Hey, hey, hey. hey you guys can get hard now. Hey, turn that camera off. This is the area. Get those cameras out of here. Hey, 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 leave the cam. Kerry Cassidy and I were in the Utah desert. We finally found the highly secretive and highly protected military facility we'd been looking for. If our sources were right, this was the site of secret Mars activity. 
interplanetary spacecraft, unusual runways, top secret underground bases, perhaps even jump rooms to Mars. But suddenly, you are surrounded by security forces. Ah, uh -uh. that's what we got here. Can you tell us? Hey, hey, get the camera out of here. Hey, leave the camera alone. Hey, hey, hey. So, what's the problem? Get in your car now. Yeah, so, uh, you guys can get in your car now. Get the cameras out of here now. Leave immediately. We do need to have some authorization. The cameras are off. The cameras are off. We'll get arrested. Come on. They told us everything we need to know. Now we know where we are, Gary. That's all right. People don't behave like that for no reason. They wanted us out of there now. They wouldn't answer any questions. They didn't even tell us whether they were reporting to the military. They didn't have any insignias on their clothing or their car. There's something going on there they don't want people to see. And they were there to prevent us from going any further. They came at us at exactly the right spot, just that little ridge. We get run off the place, and that's enough to tell us that there's something worth hiding. What we're really talking about is Mars and what this investigation has revealed. Brian O'Leary told us that when we're looking at Mars, we may be looking at the future of planet Earth. But there's something about Mars which is not just focused on our potential future, but it seems to be linked to our past. There has been an extraterrestrial presence on Mars for 100,000 years. We've got craft going back and forth that's using some kind of special technology. I have seen flying aircraft flying back and forth. When they're taking lots of people in cargo, they obviously have to use a ship. We go to Mars regularly. If they have an individual, they can go into a jump room. We would jump from an uh, office building to an underground location on Mars. What we've got is a range of puzzle pieces, and some of them fit and some of them don't fit. But the ones that don't fit are so interesting that we can't throw them away. We have a shadow government that is totally separate and beyond everything that goes on in Washington. What is the reason for the secrecy? There is a war going on here on Earth that is an unseen war. The idea of going to Mars, the idea of teleporting to Mars, the idea of having an advanced spacecraft, why not share that with the world? There's got to be an answer to that question. And the answer to that question is has to be so important that none of us are permitted to know. Now, the government's most shocking cover-up. What is that? What's it doing here? Life on Mars, extraterrestrial, and human. What you see here is a underground Martian subway. Is it possible they've already been there but haven't told us? Investigators Bill Ryan and Kerry Cassidy uncover evidence of a top-secret Mars program that's been hidden for decades. Phase one began early 1960s. A space program based on ET technology. They had an original seat from a UFO. Men who claim they've been to Mars and back. Why is it essential that I go? And he said, because the survival of the human race depends on it. Eyewitness testimony. And then we see this beam shoot up through the clouds, up into space. And dangerous confrontations. Everything you know is wrong. What you think is real is not. What you've been told are lies. There's been a coup on planet Earth. And it is our job to reveal it. There's only one team whistleblowers can trust with the truth. Bill Ryan, Terry Cassidy, Shadow Operations, The Mars Project. Ah, uh, look at that. Right. Now, focus on the ridge. Yes. And sweep across slowly to the right. We were in a remote part of the Utah desert. My partner, Kerry Cassidy, and me, Bill Ryan. Every step in our investigation had led us here, out in the middle of nowhere. If our sources were correct, we were closing in on a military installation, a hidden base for a top secret government space program. One that's been sending people to Mars. Let's go closer. But we'll get closer to that on the road. We knew we had to proceed cautiously. We did not want to be seen. But it was too late. Suddenly, they blocked the road. Security guards with guns. This wasn't good. Not good. 
actual. Hey, leave the camera alone. Hey, wait, 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 wait,
touched down. When Viking landed in 1976, I'm standing there looking at a monitor with Carl Sagan. Carl was on my left, some NBC guys are on my right, and we're looking at this first color image come in, downlink, live from Mars, and it looks like Arizona. I saw some of the pictures and sets a clear resolution. Well, Mr. President, I know all we're seeing is the landscape uh, with the uh, maybe blue sky in the distance. Then, a few hours later, the head guys sent technicians around to tweak the red knobs on all the monitors in the entire lab. Certain individuals have the political power to keep all of us in the dark about our heritage. They started in 1976 by changing the color of Mars so it would never really look like what it is, which is apparently a lot like Arizona. An error was made. The Martian sky, the scientists now say, is pinkish. This is the first color picture of the Viking 2 landing site, proving that this area of Mars is red, just as the Viking 1 site was. So this corresponds to the real Mars. Look at the sky. It's not pink. It's baby blue. So NASA had gone to great lengths to hide the fact that Mars' atmosphere is similar to our own, able to support life. If someone's painting the sky... They all had to be in on it. And that would point to an even bigger Mars cover-up. Is it possible they've already been there but they haven't told us? That's part of what we call the secret space program. What's your personal view about that? A, it exists. B, they know a hell of a lot more than we know through NASA. And C, there's cover-up after cover-up after cover-up, not only in the NASA area, but in every area. Hoagland had shown us evidence of life on Mars and of NASA's attempts to suppress it. He's been tracking this for about 37 years. He has watched the cover-up step by step with his own eyes. That's what's amazing. He was there in the control center when the original images, but he was there and he saw the color of the sky and then they changed them a couple of hours That's later. That's amazing. But did this cover-up extend to secretly sending men to Mars? We needed another look at some recent history. What we did have back in the 60s were uh, a manned mission to Mars being planned and then scrapped, right? Yep. We began where the public record leaves off, a 1967 NASA program to send men to Mars. Astronaut Brian O'Leary was selected to be on the first flight, but when the program was abruptly cancelled the following year, he hung up his spacesuit and quit. We found O'Leary had moved to South America. He seemed nervous about talking, but we managed to persuade him to speak with us via Skype. Hi, Brian. We wanted to find out if Mars was the reason he'd left his country behind. It was in 67, was it, that you joined up with NASA for the, their Mars mission program? Mars. Coming up, a thriving civilization on the red planet Bombshell revelations from a Mars expert. What you see here, I believe, is a buried transportation system. Then, a NASA astronaut reveals shocking information about a secret Mars program. I was specifically appointed to go to Mars, but history got rewritten. We just lost the connection. And later, an eyewitness confirms the extraordinary capabilities of the triangular spacecraft. This craft can reach Mars in 33 hours. Kerry Cassidy and I have worked for years to disclose information the government is hiding about extraterrestrial contact. Now, we've gotten our hands on NASA photos showing possible evidence of engineered structures on Mars. To unravel the significance of these photos, we've come to the Arizona desert to meet with space science expert Richard Hoagland. This is probably the closest analog to Mars you're going to find anywhere on Earth. This thing was formed, we think, about 50,000 years ago by an object coming in through this incredible Arizona sky, buried itself in the ground a thousand feet down. Hoagland is a former NASA consultant who claims NASA is covering up what it knows about life on Mars. 
He's uncovered what he believes to be photographic evidence of ancient ruins on Mars. Anomalous structures, including a photo that appears to show a giant face on the surface of the planet. I've been looking at photographs taken by NASA, by the Soviets, for almost 30 years. If anyone could tell us what we're looking at, it would be him. Sir Richard, what would explain these structures on Mars? If you actually look at this, it looks like it's ruins being eroded out of these sand dunes. What you see here, I believe, is a buried transportation system. Okay, you know this because you're in touch with people from inside NASA? Of course. There are people leaking like crazy. There were people that were leaking in the beginning of the Apollo program. And we found little clues buried in that database, which now confirm what we have discovered. You cannot ignore the actual science. I mean, look here. This is a Mariner 9 picture. Hoagland had brought some intriguing NASA photos of his own. This is the infamous face on Mars that was photographed by Viking in 1976. But what the officials say is that it's all tricks of light and shadow. Nothing there. But it's not a trick of light and shadow. And we know that now because we have data after data after data with multiple angles, multiple lighting. It's not a trick. There's no doubt in my mind it's a statue. But because most people are authority driven, they take the voice of their experts over their own eyes. So your so, watchword is take a look for yourself. That's absolutely. what you want to tell Take so a look for yourself. What else do you have there? These are yes. the pyramids located just to the west. It's face on Mars. You can see there's this incredible precise geometry. There's no doubt this was a huge, mile-wide, five-sided pit group known as the Aviary. Insiders with high security clearance who share information on UFOs and ET contact. He wants this information out there. And he knows a lot of powerful forces want to keep it hidden. I got something I want to show you. This is convincing evidence that there has been life on Mars. Wait a minute, Jeff. These are NASA photos, the best stuff that I've seen to date. We'd both seen intriguing photos of the surface of Mars before, but nothing like this. These photos had much better resolution than anything NASA had released publicly. The images clearly showed things on the surface, things we could not explain. These are pretty authentic looking. So where'd you get these? They came from my friends at Langley. Langley, Virginia, headquarters of the CIA. What do you know about this thing, Bob? It could be air transfer tubes. Is it being used to move water or is people walking through it? What is it? What's it doing there? It's certainly not natural. That's metal. And it's on Mars, and this has been a real eye-opener for me. And they're developing Mars. Somebody is. Doesn't say it's an Americans. Doesn't say it's ET. But I would say from the technology I'm looking at here, it don't look like it was made in the USA. Air transfer tubes, tunnels, structures that were not natural. Novell seemed convinced that someone had established some sort of base on Mars. But how were they getting there? Novell's next photo was a clue. Now what is that? It's awfully hot. It's taken from the throttle. It's it's higher than the plane should be flying. It's obviously some type of sophisticated flying triangle. We'd heard talk of a mysterious fleet of triangular craft, but Novell told us they were real, and that they could be connected to a secret Mars program that's been going on for decades. I heard that they reverse engineered it in the 60s. You're saying reverse engineered from an ET craft, right? Absolutely. What's the range and capability of these starships? Do you have any idea? They can do anything they want. You know, if you got ET technology, it would be pretty quick and pretty fast. If there is a secret Mars program, who's behind it? The US, China, North Korea, the Russians, or someone else? Does our government have access to ET technology? If so, why are they keeping it so secret? The whole reason for the cover-up is economics. It's money. If you don't have to pay for fuel, then the world changes dramatically. The banks live off of oil and gas. So that is protecting their own interests. It's protecting the banks, and banks run the world.
If Gordon Novell was correct, it could have huge implications for the future of the human race. This hidden technology could end world poverty. It could also put the energy corporations out of business. So it's all about energy, and energy determines finance. And